It's a great turnout. How's everyone doing? That was weak. All right, they either say save the worst or the best for last. So, how is the IEEE doing today? A little more. That's perfect. <clears throat> so, thanks for having me here today, guys. Uh, my name is Patrick Stark, otherwise referred to as the Stark Raving Chef. For all you stalkers, ex-girlfriends out there, you can go check out my handle on all my social media. But uh, today, I'm a bit of a jokester, so this should be fun. And uh, I will be picking some victims, I mean, uh, helpers out of the crowd, so make sure you guys are paying attention later. So today, I'd like to speak to you all all you young leaders, about purpose and impact. And I will be touching on some key points like lead, adapt, empower, and design, which you guys have heard, hopefully, this weekend, which we've had some great speakers. So I've been blessed to be part of some really cool things, um, from touring and playing in front of 20, 25,000 people, like bands like Styx, uh, being on TV, like Food Network shows, if you name one, I've probably been on it. Uh, I've cooked for over 600 rock stars, athletes, and celebrities. Uh, also with doing that was traveling and living in some cool foreign countries. I did almost get kidnapped, but that's a different, different story, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and then, you know, also having the opportunity to study at the Harvard of Cooking Schools at 17, uh, breaking those records, which are still holding, crazy, and uh, graduating with two degrees by the age of 21. But I still never felt at peace. Why? Because in my heart, I had not met or fulfilled my purpose, and I truly believe that purpose creates impact. So this highway to hell all started when I was 17 years old, and I was trying to get out of a small town called Akron, Ohio. That's where I'm from. Now, my mom probably says that I'm from outer space, but again, that's another story. <laughs> so my father said, you're not taking a year off of your life. You need to stay busy. He also said, do the one job that nobody wants to do and do it better than anyone else. So at that time, the only thing I knew was kitchens. I started out as a busser at 11. Go, go job force for minors, right? <laughs> Uh, worked up to a dishwasher, and eventually I ended up cooking on a Friday night, which was the case of when a fellow alumnus later that I would go to the same school didn't show up. How ironic, right? So after I survived that Friday night, I realized that the rush was so intense, and the camaraderie of being around older people, being on your feet, listening to Pantera, Got any Pantera fans? Rest in peace, man. All right. So, you know, this was way better than school, and I was hooked. I mean, all the way down. And if I had to use this as uh, my, my double down on getting on, out of uh, my city of Akron, this was what I was going to do. So upon uh, approaching my father for permission, my older brother was present and both of them still are my heroes to this day. They said, Patrick, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, but if you're passionate about cooking, I really support you. You know, my, my father also said, this is a really, really rough industry. There's drugs, there's divorce, there's alcoholism, there's suicide, you name it. He goes, at least get a bachelor's degree, just in case you wanna change. This by far was probably the best advice I ever got from my dad, because <laughs> it ended up paying off later in life, because you always hear that humans have a tendency to change their professions three to four times in their life. So I hear. <laughs> but uh, you know, the downfall of that is that if you pick too many things, there's nothing worse than being the jack or of all trades. <laughs> Man, we're trying to keep it PG-13. And half of nothing is what? Very good. So after graduating, a uh, couple days before turning 21, I went into corporate America. <laughs> I went chasing the proverbial carrot. I tried to be the youngest proprietor in the history of my business. 
And then I, I hit rock bottom. Like, hey, there's the Titanic, hey, Leonardo. Like, bottom, like really bad. <laughs> so, you know, I came up with this point of like, how does one approach life? What actually makes sense? And I was still young, like Doogie Howser young. And I remember hearing a Kid Rock song one day in my car. And he said, man, I'm so ahead of the game, I felt left behind. So I was tired, I was confused, I was lost, I was angry, I was hurt, I was, unha uh, I was unhealthy. Plain and simple, I just wasn't happy. By now, 80% of my graduating class had left the industry. Wow. It's just like another reaffirming point of like, what did I get myself into? Um, but in essence, I lost my innocence in the world, and I lacked direction, and I lacked purpose. So I needed to adapt. Here's one of those words you guys have been talking about. And that's staying agile in this ever-changing world and adapting as environment, times, and even personal expectations change. So I look back at this now, and this was my defining point. When I turn into warm food someday, and I can't take anything with me, can't take my guitar, can't take my car, can't take my evil ex-girlfriend, which is kind of good. <laughs> what did I do with this life, you know? And I reflected and I, I, I saw that I was investing all my time, focus, health, and happiness for a mere paycheck. And I am a firm believer that you have to pay your dues to be great. Les Brown is one of my favorite speakers. He's like, you got to be hungry. And he's so powerful. And I was like, man, there's something there to that. But at the same time, how do you balance this against your happiness? There's so much to do, only so much time, and you really reap what you sow. So I always acknowledged and, and respected this saying, in order to dream, you have to survive. Please remember this. It's super huge. You hear all your friends all the time complaining about, oh, I want to go do this. Man, why don't you just start with getting a job, you know? Go in, do that job better than anybody else. Keep the, keep the symphony of destruction moving. <laughs> Megadeth, by the way. However, under these conditions, I would rather chew glass. And at the end of the day, time is the most important thing. You can't buy more of it. So I decided I'm going to take a leave of absence. I'm gonna go regroup, I'm gonna gain perspective and focus. I needed to change, uh, change, obviously. I needed to breathe, I needed some perspective. And I needed to live and experience this crazy thing called life before I got lost in shuffle, in the shuffle, or I lost all my time. Because you can't get it back, guys, you can't. So I definitely knew I didn't wanna be confined to a kitchen for 80 hours a week and wake up and be like, man, I really wish I would have done or been, you know, like an underwear model. Swing. No. Um, <laughs> but at this point in my life, I'd already put over seven years. Now I'm over 20 years in the game. And the fair reality will have set in. It will have been too late, too, too old for opportunities that have, you know, that have passed, like mohawks, stretchy pants. Um, you know, you get older you get bigger. This is where I realized that there was more of a calling still out there, aka my purpose. So I packed what I could in my car. My last restaurant I worked in corporate was in Detroit. That wasn't a sign. I still love Detroit. I'm from Ohio, but man, that was rough. So I packed what I could in my car. And I drove to the one place that I had not lived yet. I also blew out all my shocks rolling into town. I looked like some kind of gangster, probably. But, uh, you know, just low riding in <laughs> in hopes of finding some peace, some balance, some happiness, and some purpose. You know, life doesn't change without risk. Also, please remember that point, because we're going to touch on that later. And after many moons, living life, reflecting, breathing, recalibrating, I then asked myself and reflected with honesty, what makes me happy? You know, was it fueling my passions? I loved and hated cooking all at the same time, but I knew a job as a chef would support my idea to survive to dream. 
So I needed to basically at that moment define this industry on my own terms to protect my sanity, which is almost gone, <laughs> and happiness. Or I'd end up like another statistic that you hear about. You know, I think this, this point is applicable far beyond, fumble, far beyond your career, your dreams. And, you know, I've always loved a good challenge, and I still do. So I had to ask myself, how could I help impact such a troubled industry and stay on track trying to find my purpose? So I thought back to all the scenarios that made me once leave cooking. Made me blow out my shocks. I just don't think it's funny rolling in. But, uh, but I started assessing it in a manner of simple problem, simple solution. That's always how you go through things, right? Good. I had my rabies shot this morning, don't worry. <laughs> <clears throat> Hence, I came up with this plan. And this is the empowerment moment, OK? Realize your own potential while creating an environment that fosters the growth of those around you. So I wanted to teach people not only how to cook, but to mentor and guide young culinarians, again, my survival to dream. I wanted to offer a healthy and positive work environment, a quality of life that didn't mean 80 hours. It was like all or nothing. I also wanted to enable profit sharing and financial stability for my employees. And lastly, I wanted to support clean food and gardening practices. If you guys know anything about Monsanto, it's pretty bad. And we'll talk about that later. In essence, you know, I knew I could impact the culinary industry, society with clean and nutritious food, create leaders that could continue to grow this horrible industry, and that it could teach them that, you know, this is ironic, that it can be hospitable to its own employees instead of just being another number. I knew corporate business was not going to understand this at all. I have to go out on my own, and this was going to create greater risk. But it was time to lead, blazing trails within large companies or building something from the ground up. I took the latter. <laughs> this was a lot to process for a kid that's like in his middle 20s. Like, historically, obviously, I'd made some really bad mistakes in the past by not thinking things all the way through. So I needed confirmation. I needed to know. <clears throat> excuse me, that I needed, that I was on the right path. And to each their own, especially nowadays, mine was prayer, and I asked my mind, my body, and my soul three questions. I'll step over here, see if you can see my awesome belly. What does my gut say? Can my brain find purpose? And does my heart scream with passion? One, two, or one, two, three. So at that moment in my life, I could trust my gut my brain was proven logic, but I was missing the heart. And I, I had always heard, especially from my dad, that the best gift is paying it forward, and that success was a byproduct of happiness. And in that moment, ding, light bulb goes off. This could impact others as well as my happiness. So it dawned on me this was the last piece of the puzzle, and it was passion. It was a, a philanthropic outlet. I've always had a bit of a vigilante spirit, and I always liked helping those people in need. So how was I going to choose this group? How would I support and help them, besides my own industry also at the same time? Shortly following, I started my 5013C charity called the Mohawk Militia. I was talking to Nicole and some great people today at lunch, David. And everyone thought that I'd started this charity because they thought I loved punk rock music, which I really don't that much. <laughs> but it was actually because the Indians were the best takers of the land, had the best crop rotation. They knew how to put back more than what they were taking, which we obviously have an issue with that today, too. Um, so that initial goal when I started it was to, the goal was to protect the sanctity of the seeds against genetic modifying and educating the masses on the importance as well as the danger. You know, once you start going in and 
tweaking things, you can't always necessarily go back. Once you contaminate all your strains or cross all your tomatoes or all your salmon, there's no more. It's passing on something very, very wrong to the next generation. Um, man, I'm just all thumbs today. Um, so, you know, then one day I, I run into a fellow chef, he's a vet. He looks and reminds you exactly of Joe Pesci. He's this tall, he's just electric. Does, doesn't shut up either, hi Joey. <laughs> but he told me about what our vets were being fed in the VA hospitals. He was also informing me on what they're being fed translates into later creating amputation of limbs and the limited care they receive returning defending our country when they return back. So as a result, I was like, man, I'm gonna go try to build some gardens on these VA hospital sites. I'm gonna make some juice. There's nothing healthier that goes straight to your body and it's something that's raw. You wanna know what the government did? It told me that that's the nice version. <laughs> you win a prize, no. <laughs> But you can later. But, um, you know, as a result, the charity tried to build those gardens. It got met with great resistance, ridiculous, and this just set me off on a tailspin. I was so angry that these people who protected the country, our country, our freedom, were getting dealt such a terrible hand from the country and the people that they serve and protect, you know. Freedom is not free, guys. Have you ever served? Have you? Have you? You have? Thank you. That was one out of three. Give them a round of applause right now. Not many of us nowadays even realize what it's like to go protect for our freedom. And when these people are, our troops are coming back from these extreme environments, they're clearly not okay, guys. You know, one in four homeless men in Texas right now are vets. 20% suffer from PTSD. 22 vets a day commit suicide nationally. DFW has the largest population of vets with 400,000. And there's 1.6 million in Texas total. I mean, this is a huge epidemic on our hands on how we can acclimate, care, help for these people that are risking their life to protect our freedom. So at this point within my charity, it was time to regroup and go back to the drawing board. After researching, consulting with industry leaders, philanthropic Jedis, it was now clear in my gut, my passion was telling me that I wanted to help impact the food industry, protect our food strains and soil, and lastly, not only help the industry, but help the American vets that are protecting us. So our charity, tailored a mission statement to focus on clean food, from growing, sharing, and consuming. We even went as far as to create a learn and earn concept. Miss Pam over there was, where is she? She's here somewhere. She's been day one on the, on the ground with me, helping me, but she was, I give this to her, she helped create a learn and earn concept, giving our vets a new mission, and that was to protect our clean strains of seeds while teaching our vets therapeutic gardening techniques, healthy eating lifestyles, and then providing them a wage for whatever they harvested at the end of the day. So if you go back to this, I just said the gut was good, the heart's good, where's the logic? How does this become sustainable? How do you keep this going from then being like you're 10, going back to your parents and being like, hey, can I get a loan? Hey, can I, can I get an advance for next week? Like one of my dishwashers at my jobs. Hey, can I get a loan? No, oh, man. Every week. Come on. Um, the logic here was to take this produce and sell it to my chef buddies, other businesses in Dallas, and getting this food in our communities. And we like to have a, a saying. It's called produce with a purpose. That was our big tagline. And we have a campaign now to partner and showcase these local chefs, their dishes, and the restaurants and businesses that utilize and help support our veterans. So this was the time to design. This was, by definition, sculpt the future and the world you live in, including your own professional image. Notice I tried to put some glasses on today. 
Just kidding. So for every dollar that's donated to this charity, the Mohawk Militia, and we're not like other charities, we take a lot of pride in this, 100% of it goes back to the vets. Not this nine cents out of a dollar, I'm not gonna kick mud, like it's, it's cool, everyone's trying to help and get in those communities, but you hear it more common, commonly said to, like nowadays that the number one hot thing to do is to go get a 5013C charity and just abuse it, write-offs, whatever. Again, that's another story someday. Um, but, you know, within this money, a vet can gr get their own gardening space, produce for himself up to 3000 a month in profit by planting and harvesting organic produce through therapeutic gardening. See, what we wanted to do was really revolutionize farming, make it fun, make it attractive, but more importantly, create sustainability not only for our vets, but for our clean food. We have plans right now to scale our project across the U.S., but we still need help, like everybody, you know. It's going to take this whole village to, to really spread it from sea to shining sea. We're also in the process of creating scholarships for continuing education, gardening, agriculture, horticulture, culinary arts. Uh, we're going to create a job placement for after that, after they graduate from these scholarships to be able to go in to restaurants that conceptually we're designing, that we're also buying the produce and um, customizing our menus to. But, um, you know, we're really trying to impact every facet and create as much sustainability as we can within this. Um, last but not least, I'm sure you've heard in the news recently about all the farmers that have, and this has been going on for some time, but all the farmers that are taking their lives because they can't keep up. So, you know, I think they're right there with our veterans as far as kind of getting the raw end of a stick between Monsanto and, and everything else. All that information's on, on the www.mohawkmilitia.com website. But we have plans to launch a distribution company. We're gonna employ American vets as well. And we're also gonna help other struggling farmers who practice the same clean gardening because right now they're running into, you know, it's just like the 80s back on Sunset Strip right now, what's happening to these farmers. What ends up happening is, is that they basically sign like a bad record deal. <laughs> and then the record company comes back at the end, which is for the farmer, the seed company, and they have to pay dividends on every yield, and they can track the DNA and come back and just wipe these farmers. They're pushed into a corner. You know, that's not fair. It's definitely not American. So on that note, I'm going to show you guys a little recipe using some fresh ingredients grown by our vets. I'm sure you guys are tired of me talking as, uh, or, you know, probably tired of listening to me, I should say. So on that note, we're going to, change it up a little bit. Now, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm probably going to be needing some help up after here, so you guys definitely, definitely want to pay attention to what I am teaching you because there could be some pretty sweet, awesome prizes. So, who here likes to cook? All right, what's the first step of cooking? Very good. Second step. Mise en place, fancy French word meaning having everything in its place. The number one reason why people burn stuff or are scared to cook is because they're not prepared. And if you get all your ingredients together and you start with the one item that takes the longest first, you, your chances just went up to like 80%. <laughs> so we have this recipe over here at our cool merch booth with Miss Jen that's sitting over there. Hi, wave to Jen. Hi, Jen. See, look at all those friends you just made. <clears throat> so, remember, no gloves, no love. But, first thing we're going to do today, I'm seeing if you're paying attention already. All right. So, we're going to be making a little healthy snack, all right? The basil came today from one of my favorite gardeners back in Dallas, Texas. He's been absolutely instrumental in helping coach and set up the, the learning curve and the techniques for teaching the veterans that come in. 
And we call this dish the avocado mi amore, which just means avocado my love. If you got people at home that like to eat chips, chips and salsa, we're in Texas, um, just continually bad snacking, this is a great thing to substitute that'll also help you lose some weight. Now, if you're vegan as well, all you gotta do is not add the cheese, but today you're gonna need some salt, some pepper, some garlic powder, some toasted almonds, sun-dried tomatoes, a little bit of lemon if you want to be sour, and then we've got some great basil. We also have an avocado, excuse me, and a cucumber. So the first thing you want to do, and of course, we have the magic of TV today. The first thing that's going to take the longest is going to be toasting your nuts. That's what she said, no. <laughs> All right, then the second thing you wanna do, oh man, this is just going down though. <laughs> You're gonna wanna go ahead and take off just the tip. <laughs> like such. <laughs> I need you up here, man. All right, so obviously all the nutrition and the, um, the, the nutrient density is gonna be in the skin, but sometimes it's just too much skin. So I like to do a little trick with a peeler. So I have a cutting board, a peeler, a knife, and a pair of scissors, which I'll show you a good trick. So all that you wanna do is wait a, or about an inch or so, and I don't know why, just, yeah, an inch apart, thank you. So basically, it's gonna look almost like a casino chip when you go ahead and slice it. So what we're gonna do, if you have a mandolin at home, it works really, really great because it's that little board that has the metal blade on it and you can just, man, again with the motions, I don't know what's wrong with me today. <laughs> so you wanna cut them about a half inch thick like such. Who here knows how to, how to use a knife real well? Don't worry, I'm not letting anybody use a knife up here. <laughs> Especially when I heard there's a bunch of tech people, I'm like, oh man, where's the first aid kit, right? Oh, it's right there, he got it. So what we're gonna do is take all these and just reserve them after you slice them. Notice how they look like a little casino chip. <laughs> Always gotta taste your food. All right, so the next thing we're doing here that's gonna take the next amount of time is gonna be your avocado. <laughs> my mom's gonna watch this and tell me to not talk with my mouth full, so <laughs> mom knows best. So what you want to do, I'm getting ready to shoot a string of uh, videos for avocados from Mexico. Plug. So <laughs> make sure you guys be on the lookout for that. So when you do and you clean an avocado, there's actually a couple cool tricks. One, if you ever want to not be a weirdo in the supermarket and be like tapping things and sniffing stuff like precious, you know, like you don't want to do that. You can take the little top off like such and if it's really deep dark brown in the center means it's overly ripe if it's very very yellow means it's going to be underripe and just like uh, the three bears just a little bit of brown and a little bit of green just right <laughs> very nice all right so what you want to do is very carefully make an incision and roll your blade all the way around making sure that your blade is not gonna hit your hand. Safety first, right? Now what you wanna do, make a wish, and you wanna twist it. Then you have two pieces like such. Notice there's no issues with brown discoloration if there is. I mean, sometimes it happens, you get a bad one, but what you wanna do is take it, corner your knife, Sometimes you can use a spoon if you want to be safe, but 
This looks way more, way more cool, right? Um, there's a spoon over here. So here's a good trick. One, if you're making guacamole, you can go ahead and just take the side and squeeze it in, and it comes right out. The other way you can do it is by taking the edge of your spoon and giving it a nice little rim job right around the side. Would you stop it? I'm trying to focus up here. See, notice on there, even though it looked beautiful on the inside, there's a little bit of discoloration. Let's go ahead and very carefully take it off. And then you can always dice it like such. Put it right in here. Pretty easy. Lose anybody yet? You good? Awesome. All right. Next thing we're going to do is, and this is a really easy thing, is if you like a lot of garlic and you got vampires, go to town. Otherwise, just a light dusting works really well. And then I'll take my glove off. We're going to go ahead and add in our toasted almonds, our sun dried tomatoes. And last but not least, we're going to do a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper. And just a smidgen of salt. Now remember, if you're going to end up using some Parmesan cheese, this is going to be a little bit salty as well. Who here thinks that they have the worst knife skills in the world? Anybody? I see a bunch of people hiding from me right now. So I bring it up just because, and I do a lot of cooking classes with kids, believe it or not. There are some people that probably need the guidance the most right now, especially when everybody conceptualizes that if it's in a supermarket and it's on a shelf, it must be tested, it must be safe. Fortunately, we're not in Europe, but America does rock, so always keep an eye on it. This becomes your best friend. Just make sure they're clean. Coupons on Sunday get out of control with my mom. So, you know, sorry, mom. All right. So what you do, very carefully, roll up your herbs. This is great, too, if you want to do your sun-dried tomatoes thinner. And voila. All right. So again, I'm going to try to Clean this up a little bit. And what we're going to do is just give it a nice little easy mix. How's that smell? You getting hungry? All right. If he dies, nobody else gets any, all right? No. <laughs> all right. Definitely not rocket science. Definitely not building the first digital camera. <laughs> so what we want to do is take one of your little slices of cucumber, and you're just going to take your spoon, and you're just going to scrape the side right on top, like such. And then you're going to hit it with a little bit of balsamic syrup, just a smidgen. And then we're going to top it with a little bit of shaved Parmesan cheese, like such. And there you go. There's a cool little snack for you guys at home. Well, I definitely don't want to leave the knife up here. <laughs> But what's going to be great is that all these samples are going to be available after this presentation. But in the meantime, you got a trash bag over here? Thanks, man. There's a knife in there, too. Careful. Thank you. It's the chef in me. You just can't leave. You can't call up your friends and leave a dirty cutting board, right? 
So, we're going to do something right now called Stark Raving Training. So, I need two volunteers from the audience to come up here, and you guys are going to square off to see who can plate the most of these beautiful cucumber bites and garnish them with a little bit of balsamic and a little bit of Parmesan. Now, I will give you guys a trick that you want to think like the Ford assembly line. So you're going to want to scoop, 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 scoop on top of your cucumbers, drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. That's how people are able to cook large, copious amounts of food. So who wants to be my first vic I mean, contestant <laughs> on the price is wrong, Bob? <laughs> All right. Now, I did. I was going to say that the winner takes home a really cool prize. So I'm going to up the ante on that, too. All right. Let's see. Now the, one, the hands just went down more. <laughs> I'm going to let Pam. Pam, why don't you pick the, the two people you think? How many people have the hands? <laughs> I've been picking on you all day. Give that a whirl, dude. Round of applause, yes. Okay, so on each station you'll see an apron and some gloves. Those are yours to keep afterwards. Maybe not the gloves, but you never know. So. Again, these bites are going to be ready afterwards over at our merch booth. We do have some really cool things over there. We've got t-shirts, we've got seed bombs, we've got koozies, bandanas, the recipe to this. Um, for every one t-shirt that's purchased, that's five trays of seeds uh, with the koozies, uh, seed bombs and all that, uh, we'll purchase one tray of seeds for one of our American vets. So what's going to happen here, guys? It, first off, what's your name? I'm Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Thank you for being brave and coming up here. Jesslyn. Jesslyn. I just want the avocado. You just want the avocado. She's just going to sit behind the screen and eat like, <laughs> Right? She's not, she's not even playing. Um, so how this is going to work is I'm going to pick up my trusty guitar, and I'm going to serenade not only you guys and the audience, but do something for American troops. I'm going to play the Star Spangled Banner. Whoever can plate the most perfect bites, I'm going to be looking at cleanliness and just overall visual appearance. You know what they say, people eat with their eyes. Unless you're my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> she was a succubus, no. <laughs> you just eat the whole soul, no. <laughs> She's going to kill me. So. When, I, when the audience counts it down, three, two, one, you guys can start planning. Any questions? No. By you. All right, Who's, who, who, who thinks this person's going to win? <laughs> who thinks Jocelyn's going to win over here? <laughs> I'm glad we took that knife off the stage. <laughs> Uh, oh, in the neck. All right, audience, count it down from three, two, one, go.
Very cool. All right. Pam, I think I'm going to need you to help judge up here. All right? Man, this is a close one. <laughs> All right, we got to see what, uh, does quality count or just Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's cleanliness. Cleanliness. Appetizing the eye. I feel like Wisconsin as called as over as here. That's like how much you can. That's okay. You did great. You did great. You know, she's perfect. And she has one, two, three, four, five, six. So. Man, round of applause. Look at that. All right. Over here. Yep. Over here. I think there's Dahmer under there right there, too. <laughs> Wisconsin wants their cheese back. No. <laughs> that was a joke. So, both ladies, can you come over here? Yeah, come on in. Let's deliberate real quick. Okay. What do you think? I think she did more. Hers looked better. Something's wrong. All right, so you guys stand together. Okay. Patrick, you come in the middle. All right. Okay. So. You both win! Woo! Good job. Now, here's the kicker. Afterwards, I'm going to get you guys your prizes. While I'm finishing talking up here, this is totally up to you. You could be nice, and we could keep plating some more so everybody gets to try them. Or you could just be like, oh, I'm done. I'm spent. You guys want to you feed them? Awesome. Another round of applause, guys. Good job. All right, guys. In my closing, in my 20s and my 30s, I was very selfish, very vain, very materialistic. I was missing the big picture. Following, these, following such, I never really found big, uh, big success or true happiness by thinking about only myself. The gains finally showed up when I started helping other peoples and I didn't think, I said, I just say peoples plural. <laughs> right, you've won. Um, so recognize yourself as industry leaders and that you have an opportunity to impact your industry as well as your happiness. Value, respect, and maximize your time searching your soul to find your passions and confirm your purpose. Then ask yourself how you can impact others. Create that plan to enable the decision to go for it, to take that risk. Once you think you got it, who wants to come up and demonstrate the one, two, three? I've been picking on you all day. Come on up here. He didn't even raise his hand. I'm like, come on up here. Give him a round of applause. All right, what's, what's the three points to ask yourself? Your gut. Your gut, your heart, your, your head, head, and, your and heart. then your heart. One, two, three. Good job. Jacob, thank you for coming up. Once you focus, yep. Pair of scissors in them. No. <laughs> Once you focus on yourself, uh, you know you can plan for that purpose and impact, and the rest will follow. It'll take care of itself, and in the end, it'll impact your life. No one talks about this stuff anymore. You know, so definitely try to. When you, when you see somebody young that's like trying to struggle, and granted, the only time I ever try to help people. I know that sounds bad, but you can't help everybody, but you can always spot somebody that wants to help themselves. And for those people, 
that's your time to pay it forward, spread the word, be honest with yourself versus what society tells you you should do. It's your life at the end of the day. Be sure to stop by and get a recipe card. Say hi to Jen over there again. We've got a big North Texas Giving Day coming up. So uh, we're going to have some information on that as well over there. Be on the lookout for that. Again, we got some crazy cool merch over there. You can check out www.mohawkmilitia.com for more information, cool stuff on how I got the name, why it's important. If you want to make a donation, we just finished a campaign where we tried to raise $250,001 donations. It's all tax free. Uh, there's no fees. Yep, so if you guys want to help spread the word, we love it. At the end of the day, thank you so much for your time. I, Triple E, thank you for having me out. I'm sure this was a circus. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to leave this up for a little bit of Q&A. That sound cool? Sure. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> right? I'll be over here by the merch booth. Feel free to come up. I've got some napkins right here on the side. Where are you going to put the food, I guess, is my question. Uh, you can come up and grab a napkin, and, and one of our lovely chefs here will be able to give you a sample <laughs> with their clean gloves. Notice how I'm already putting you on my payroll. This is good. Thank you guys so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed it.